<clears throat> okay, well, uh, eventually I'm going to do a full review of the Fantasy Age system, which I'm, I'm finding I quite enjoy. But, before I did that, there was a character picture that, that resonated quite a bit with me in one of their archetypes, their rogue archetype. And you can see I put the picture in the background here. Right here. Um, I really enjoyed that picture. I thought it looked very cool. I thought it was interesting in ways that a lot of characters, uh, at least that I would normally make, aren't. So I wanted to go through, I wanted to do a let's make a character. Um, with using her as uh, the concept. So, what I really liked about her is that she, to me, she looks like she's half elf, half orc, and you don't really see that. You know, you see, you see half and halves, but there's always human elf, human orc. You know, um, what I liked about this was she looked like she was half orc, half elf. So I decided to run with that. And the good thing about the Fantasy Age game is it makes it really easy to do that. All right, so we're going to go through, they have nine steps to create your character. We're going to go through all nine steps in the order they say to do it in the book. And I'm using a hard copy of the book, not a PDF copy, so I can't put a, a, a thing on the page here, unfortunately. All right, so the first thing you do is a character concept. I don't see concept. So they have a concept here on the third page of the uh, Roll20. I'm using Roll20 again. I was going to use the form fillable PDF, but there were some typos on it um, that I didn't really care for. And I'm trying to get comfortable with Roll20, so I decided to do it here. Um, so her concept is Outcast Halfbreed. She's not accepted in either, either world, Orcs or Elves. Now we move on to Abilities. We're going to do the buying abilities, where you get 10 points to spread among her uh, among uh, the abilities. Now, I'm not going to explain what every ability is. We'll go through and show you one by one. But I, they're, they're pretty self-explanatory. Accuracy, communication, constitution, dexterity, fighting, intelligence, perception, strength, and willpower. <clears throat> they're all pretty self-explanatory. Um... The two now this is a fantasy flight games game. No, no, I'm sorry. This is a Green Ronin game, and uh, again, this I'll go more into depth into stuff like this in my full review of the the game system. But they've come a long way with with D and D third edition, and they've really made it their own thing with Mutants and Masterminds third edition. And you can kind of see the kernels of third edition here in Fantasy Age. And one of the things they did was they made it so that if you're strong, you're not necessarily good in hand-to-hand -hand combat or melee combat. So they have the fighting stat. And just because you're dexterous doesn't necessarily mean you're good with a bow or, or, or finesse weapons. So now you have accuracy. And uh, I thought that was pretty cool. All right. So I've got 10 points to divide amongst these stats. Uh, they go from 1 to 5. And if you want a rough correlation to D&D, &D, like what would this be? you know, for a charisma in D&D, &D, uh, you can multiply what rank you put in by 2 and add 10. So, 0 times 2 is 0, plus 10 is 10. So everybody would start with roughly a 10 in D&D in &D parlance. Um, I'm going to give her a 3 accuracy. I'm going to keep her communication at 0, I think. Uh, I think I'll move her... Con well, I'll, I'll come back to that. I'm going to put her dexterity at 2, because she's going to get plus 1 for the elf. Uh, put her fighting at 1, I think. Leave her intelligence at 0. Put her perception at 3. Her strength at 1. And let's see where that leaves us. 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, and that's 10. Well, that went quick. I'm going to leave everything the way it is. I'm tempted to take a point from somewhere and put it into Constitution, but we'll leave it as it is. So just to confirm the points, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, 10. Okay, that's her 10 points. Next, we're going to apply her racial uh, template. Now, uh, it's going to work a little differently for her 
Uh, we'll explain that when we get to the point that works differently for her. Now, when you make a half-breed character, you choose uh, which of the, the species is dominant. And I think it's clear for her, uh, it's Elf. I think you can make an argument for it being Orc, but I'm going to go with Elf. Elf is her dominant species. I'm going to say her mother was an Elf who was raped by an Orc warrior. Um, so Elf is her dominant. So she gets most of the abilities of Elf. Elves add one to their dexterity. So that will bring her dexterity to three. Now she gets to pick an ability focus, either intelligence, natural lore, or perception, seeing. Uh, focuses are just areas of expertise inside of an attribute. So you might have, you know, she's very dexterous with a three. Um, well, let, let's go, what does she have for perception? She has, so she's she's highly observant. She has a three perception. So she, she's very observant. Um, however, if I took the perception seeing focus, it means she's even more perceptive with her eyesight. She has very keen eyesight. Eyes of an eagle, as they would say. Whereas if I took intelligence, natural lore, she's fairly intelligent. You know, one's, one's above average. If I took the focus, natural lore, it means she has a specialty in natural lore. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with intelligence. Oh no, her intelligence is zero. So she's average intelligence, but she has a focus of natural lore. What happens if I hit that? Okay. Uh, so she gets a plus two in any role involving natural lore. So it shows that she's average intelligence, but very well-versed in nature. And that's it. That's Focuses are very simple. It's a very simplified skill system. There's no ranks. Um, you either have a skill focus or you don't. And if you have a skill focus, then you get plus two to your for the roll, in addition to whatever bonus the base attribute gives you. She has Dark Sight, which allows her to see up to 20 yards in darkness without a light source. Uh, class powers and spells, talents, weapons, languages, goals, equipment, ties. My wife's going to bitch at me when she reads this. Like, I told you, next time you do this, you should go through and make sure you know where everything is. But I, I like to do things on the fly. I like things to be a little more organic than that. Um, but that said, I cannot seem to find where racial abilities would be. So... I'm going to put them here. Class, powers, and spells. Um, for now. If I find a different place, I'll put them there later. So she's got Dark Sight, 20 yards. Alright. Her speed is equal to 12, plus her dexterity, minus any armor penalty. So her dexterity is 3. I'm making her speed a 15. She can speak and read Elven and Common. And now this is where um, things go different. One of the things I like about Fantasy Age is you get your basic things for being whatever race. Then they have a chart. Uh, a racial benefits chart. And you generally roll twice on whatever race you have and get both those benefits. Since she's a half-breed, she's going to roll once on the elven benefits and then once on the orc benefits. And that's a 2d6 roll. So we'll go ahead, set our dice roller. 2d6. Roll once on the elven benefits chart. And we got a 6. 
A six gives gives her the weapon group bows. Well, that works really well since she has a bow. And now we're going to roll once on the orc benefits chart. Again, 2d6. A6. Focus, communication, persuasion. So on a communication, she has the persuasion focus. So she gets plus two anytime persu... Oh, wait. I think I'm... Okay. That was under the wrong chart. That was under the human benefits chart. Six under orcs is focused strength intimidation. Something else that uh, I think fits with this character. So whenever she tries to intimidate somebody, her strength is equal to three. And that's it for her race. Next we move on to backgrounds, which is a neat, neat aspect of fantasy age. There are, I won't go into a, a huge detail, so I'll save that for my full review, my character generation review. But there are four backgrounds, outsider, lower class, middle class, and upper class. And within those backgrounds are classes, or within those social classes are backgrounds. Now, you can roll. They have a chart where you can roll a d6 to determine your class, and then another d6 to determine your background. But given that I have a pretty clear concept for this character, I'm going to give her the outsider background with the exile, or the outsider social class, sorry, with the exile background. So she can choose either communication bargaining as a focus or intelligence cultural lore. I'm going to choose bargaining under communication. I see her um, bartering a lot. So under communication, bargaining. And I should put that up here somewhere, background. They won't let me put it there. Class level experience, oh, background. Background is exile, social class is outsider. And that must carry right over to here. All right. Next, we're going to choose the class. Well, since she is the archetype for the rogue class, she is going to be a rogue. Now, classes in... There's only three classes in the Fantasy Age RPG. But they're not classes in the same way that you'd get them in Pathfinder or D&D. These are more like broad archetypes. So anything that uses... Dexterity, finesse, personality as their primary attributes would fall under the rogue category. And they're all very customizable. Uh, so as a level one rogue, I get the following. Yeah, it says primary abilities for rogue, accuracy, communication, dexterity, and perception. Starting health is 25 plus my constitution score plus 1d6. So 1d6, get a 3, plus my constitution of 0 is 3, plus 25 is 28 health. She starts with the following weapon groups. Brawling, light blades, stabs, and either black powder or bows. Well, I guess I'm going to choose black powder because I already have bows. So I get everything under the weapon group since I already started with bows. So I'm just going to write down brawling. Oops. This time I'll spell it right. Light blades. Stabs. Black powder weapons. And bows. And I'm just going to say I really like the font that they used here for the uh, Roll20 Fantasy Age character sheet. I think it's very cool. And now, that was just for being a rogue. As a level 1 rogue... I have pinpoint attack. Once per round, you can add 1d6 to the damage of a successful attack if your dexterity is greater than your opponent's. So, pinpoint attack plus 1d6 
damage once per round if dex is greater than opponents. I have rogue's armor which says you are at home in leather armor. You can ignore armor penalty uh, the armor penalty of leather armor altogether. It affects neither your speed nor your dexterity. No T's for leather armor. And then, starting talents. You become a novice in the following talents. Contact, scouting, or thievery. Now, this is where things really start getting customized for characters. There's a number of talents. And to keep things simple, because simple seems to be the goal of the Fantasy Age RPG. Um, there's only three levels. There's Novice, Journeyman, and Master. And that's it. There's no skill ranks to keep track of. You are either a Novice, a Journeyman, or a Master. And I have Contact, Scouting, or Thievery. I'm going to go with Scouting. Um... The way I see her, she makes her living in the woods, on the fringes of society, working with mostly a band of dwarven miners who accept her for who she is. So I think scouting works for her. That is a rogue class talent. And a, you need dexterity too high. Pardon me, I, I'm going to have to pause for a second because I think my dog is doing something that I'm going to want to get rid of her for. Jaina! We don't chew on boxes. Bad girl. I've got a Pomeranian who is approaching her first birthday. And she is determined not to make it to that birthday. She has become super curious about everything. And has started chewing on everything. And it's a pain in the butt because we, my wife and I were recently talking about how lucky we were that she didn't go through the chewy phase that our other dogs went through. We have a, another Minpin and another Pomeranian. And <clears throat> they chewed everything when they were younger than her. So we thought she had moved beyond that. She has not. She was just waiting till she was tall enough to start pulling books and stuff down off shelves. And right now she's chewing on a box I have in the corner of my room. All right. Anyway. Scouting. So you need a dexterity of two or higher, which I have. I have a dexterity of three. So as a novice, I can use the lay of the land to, to your advantage. If you fail a dexterity stealth test, you can re-roll it, but you must keep the result of the second roll. Very cool. So talents. I am a scouting novice. May roll stealth once. And I think that's it. Uh, let's see what stuff they said that... Oh, we have some... Some things to tie up. Defense. Defense is 10 plus dexterity plus shield bonus. Oh, actually, I think I get equipment too. I think they list that actually under equipment though. So let's see. What, what step does it say we're at? Choose social class. Choose, choose class is step 5. So choose starting equipment. Your character needs gear before the adventure begins. So let's move to the equipment section. So let's take a look at a rogue starting year. Oh, I know I saw something about this. The good thing about this book is it's not very big. And at first I was put off by that. Um, you know, it, it's not that it costs that much. I got the book for 20 bucks, 
and it's, it's I want to say 140 pages. Yeah, it's 140 pages, you know, and, and I look at my Force and Destiny book, which granted cost me twice as much as this, you know, and it's almost 500 pages. Uh, I look at my, my uh, D&D 5th edition book, and it looks to be maybe 100 pages more. I don't, I'm not going to dig it out right now. Uh, but in the end, it, it didn't really need to be that much bigger, to be honest with you. They did a good job of fitting everything they needed into this into this book. Starting equipment. Characters begin play with the following. A backpack, traveler's garb and water skin, general stuff. If you are a rogue, you get light leather armor and two weapons. And if you choose a bow or crossbow, you get a quiver at 20 arrows. If you have the weapon and shield talent, you get a medium shield. And then you get starting money. As an outsider, I get 15 plus 3d6 3 D silver pieces. So, 15 plus 11 is 26 silver pieces. Oh, there's an extra talents here, too. Very nice. 26 silver pieces. Where would you go? Money! 26. Alright. Now for equipment, it says, I get light leather armor and two weapons. I think that's going to be a bow and a short sword. Okay. Light leather armor. Armor rating of 3, armor penalty of 0, generally costs 15 silver pieces, but I get it for being a rogue. Light leather armor. I don't know what that X is for. Then I also get, let's see, they have longbow and shortbow. I guess, I guess I'll call that a shortbow. Shortbows have a 16 slash 32 yard range. A short sword. Maybe. Maybe they don't have... Oh, there we go. Short sword. Light blades. Which uses accuracy. Very nice. So short bows also use accuracy and they list them with a damage of 1d6 plus 1 and short sword uses accuracy and does 1d6 plus 2 And you have to have a minimum strength of one, which I have, to use the short sword, so that's good. Okay. So I have my light leather armor. Like I said, gives me an armor bonus, an armor rating of three. I'll give this to have a uh... well, 
Let's see if we can. See, they have it nice and. What is this? All right, the weapon. Short sword. The roll to hit is going to be plus three. Uh, short sword doesn't have a range. Put that and that. The damage. One D six plus two. So let's see. So if I hit attack on that, twelve, and if I do the damage, four. Hmm. Very nice. Then if we add the short bow, it's also plus three to hit. It does have the ranges. What did I say? Sixteen and thirty-two. And the short bow is 1d6 plus 1. And both of them... Uh, this one requires a negative 1 strength to use. I know the short sword requires a negative 1 strength to be able to use. And the short bow require. Oh, they both require negative 1 strength. So I'm well capable of using both. Okay. And I still need my armor. Ammo counter. We'll get back to that in a minute. Weapon and attack roll. Armor. Three. Penalty of zero. Armor type. Light leather. And that was step six. Seven is calculate defense. Defense equals 10 plus dexterity plus shield bonus. So 10, 13. Next is pick a name. I already have Alawar. Which I've decided is Elvin for uh, Warborn. And choose goals and ties. Let's see. Now your character is almost ready to go. Before you jump into your first adventure, though, take a few minutes to think about your character's goals and what ties you might have to other characters in the group. Well, I don't have any other characters in the group. Let's see. Her biggest goal is to survive, I'm going to say for now. Background. Goal. Survive. And she does have ties to the Dwarven mining camp. And that's it. That's all nine steps of making a fantasy age character. I think it's pretty simple. I, I think you could go through, make a couple of different rogues, and, and they could come out all very differently. And I don't think I screwed up anything, at least too majorly, here. Um, I guess we can remove those there since they show up here. And that's it. I'm pretty happy. Uh, I think this... I, I've been... I don't want to say I've been on the lookout for a generic RPG system. I've, I've got GURPS for that. But I, I was wanting a fantasy system that was maybe a little more versatile than D&D. &D. And don't get me wrong, I love D&D. &D, and that's probably going to be my gaming group's primary RPG for a long time to come. But I wanted something that I could change the tone of fairly simply. I thought that was going to be the cipher system that just came out, but I, I, I couldn't really get behind the cipher system for some reason. I don't know. Uh, Fantasy Age, however, I really dig. 
I, I think it, it looks like it's going to play fairly well. It's got a really neat stunt system. Uh, it's 3d6 based, but they enhance that with a cool stunt system, which I won't get into here, but it's neat. And I wanted to see about making a character. And I think it's got one of the simplest character creation systems of any RPG I can think of. And I think the character still feels like a rogue. You know, a lot of times with these more generic RPGs, you get things and they don't really feel like anything, you know? Um, I think Alawar feels like a rogue. And I, 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 had a, I liked that I had a picture and I was able to take that picture and translate it into a character. I think that is a good strength of an RPG system. And that was one of the problems I was having with the Cypher system. I was looking at it, and I, I was thinking, I don't know that I could make this character. Um, maybe I didn't give it a good enough chance. But that was my feeling on, on Cypher, anyway. But I like Fantasy Age a lot better. I like that this picture here resonated with me. And I was able to actually go in and make this character. And I, and I think if I played this character, it would feel like the character looks. And that was important to me. Uh, I'll probably do a couple more of these. I'll probably make a warrior and a mage. And I'm going to do a full review of the game system. Uh, but I'll save that for the future. For now, this was a let's build a character for Fantasy Age. And uh, we made Alawar. The half-elf, half-orc rogue.